The restaurants you love, the food you crave, and the people that make it all happen. We tell their stories on the Paper Trails Podcast with Albemarle Paper Supply. All right, guys, and we're back for the second part of episode nine with Cloyster Honey. And so Randall and Joanne, and so I know outside we spent a lot of time with Randall. He talked about uh, the birds and the bees, so to speak, and so <laughs> no pun intended there. But um, actually the pun was intended. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, yeah, you know what? Let's, let's talk about... You know, I know we got into it a little bit. We said, what, December of 05 or 06 06. 06 Mm -hmm. was the first high, the first box. What do you call it? First high? Yeah, first high. First high. So give us a little history because, you know, you, I mean, obviously, you know, I'm I'm now finding out, man, you you guys, you guys are a national company. Mm -hmm. You ship out, you know, obviously a percentage of the business is here in Charlotte, North Carolina, local. We have stores, you know, that, that sell the products. Maybe 15%. Maybe. 15%? Maybe. Oh, 15, 10, maybe. 15, maybe. Where, where, where are they? If, if somebody wants to buy locally, is there any, any spots we can take them to? Or is online better? Like what's, what's... Online's great. Savory Spice is great. Poor Olive is good. Creative by Nature. Mm-hmm. Um, Actually, just we're going to leave there. Orman's Cheese. Yeah, Orman's really, she does a great job. Seventh cool. Street Market. Seven, yep, yep, down um, yep. Both savory spices, as Randall mentioned, because they have their, our product open so you can taste it. Wow. Tonight. The Beehive okay. in Over Street. Yeah. Um, so there's several places oh, here locally. Absolutely. So and we're sorry we left anybody out. Yeah, Fresh <laughs> Market yeah. at Strawberry yeah. Hill. Yeah. 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 But yeah, so so if, if you're local in the area, you know, the suburbs of Charlotte, Mecklenburg County, obviously there's... A dozen or so places mm-hmm. you can go Easy. and visit, yeah. um, you know. But I mean, you guys do. I mean, and as you guys can see right here, I mean, I am thoroughly impressed. I love it. The packaging, the straws. What do they call honey straws? Honey straws yeah. uh, there's 20 different flavors. Yeah. You know, so we have cinnamon and orange blossom and you know chipotle. We we talked about earlier, yeah. and so. But mm-hmm. um, but how how did we get here? How did we get the 20 flavors? I mean, because you know, w- one thing we talked, you know, kind of off air was. You know, I think a lot of times people see now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, right. uh, fifteen <laughs> right. years later. It's easy now. You know, yes. yeah, like wow, like you have a warehouse, an operation, and we have hides in the back, and you know, you have land up in the mountains, mm-hmm. and we take them there because of the the flavor. Pl- I mean, yeah. how does it even get there? You know, if, if somebody, and you know what, I guess the reason I ask is, you can apply whatever mm-hmm. you say to your business. Yeah. To anything, almost, yes. almost anything. Yep. Landscape, yep. roofing company, gutters, restaurant, moving. Company. You know, yes. moving company. <laughs> yeah. You guys had, um, you know. So say, say somebody's out there and they want to start a baking business and they want to mm-hmm. start from their house and they want to start small and keep. You know, how does a business grow like that? You know, because you know you guys didn't have a moving company as well. You know, and so you have some experience in business, business ownership. Yeah, so. So how do we get here? Yeah. Give us the backstory. You know, whoever wants to start, I'll jump in. Okay, because I'll talk. Well, I'll start. I'll start with how we started, and then I guess I'll give my thoughts on okay. how somebody should grow. Okay. Because we've done it a little differently, I think, than some other companies. Okay. Definitely, friends of ours have kind of done it the same way. But um, so you know, as we had mentioned, I gave Randall a hive for Christmas one year, and we just started producing honey, and we. As he likes to say, we produce more, well, we, not we, the bees produce more honey than we had friends to give it to. Okay. And so we were somewhere and um, somebody had said, you know, you guys should sell at a farmer's market. So there used to be a farmer's market, there still is, um, outside the Bank of America building um, Trade and Triumph. Okay. And we went there and Randall would go um, on a Friday and he would sell honey. Mm-hmm. And he did really well before school let out. And then once school was over, every teacher in North Carolina almost keeps honey. And they're what? kind of like, they're hobbyists. Okay. They have one or two hives and they produce 60, 100 pounds, 50 pounds, pounds yeah. whatever they produce. And they go to the farmer's market and they sell it. Okay. And he came home and he was a little frustrated because he had done really well. And then all of a sudden the competition was there. Okay. He's like, how do we compete? Because they come in selling their honey. Where we were selling it for 9 or $10 a pound, they were selling it for 6 Many They were just trying to dump. 200 pounds and make $1,200 and walk away and they're done. Yeah. You know, they're not, they're taking the money, go to the beach and that's it. Yeah. And, and so. we hadn't really thought of it as a business, right. but we had just thought of it somewhere between hobby and business. Okay. So it wasn't like we were like, this is what we're going to do because uh-huh. we really Everybody, both had full-time yeah. jobs. 
but it was just something that we were like, I wonder how this would do. So it was more of a question for us, I think. And so Randall came home and he's like, we have to do something different. I don't know what it is. And I was that's like, a, well, let's come up, you know, he's like, that's the Randy. business owner mind, right? Exactly. Like, it's like, hold on, yeah, something. Yeah. This we is have to adjust. Right, right. There's too much competition. I have to rise. Yeah. And so we came up with, well, we knew about crystallized honey. And um, so cinnamon crystallized honey, crystallized honey with cinnamon has been out there. And I saw for a long time. Yeah, all right, well, let me try to do it. Okay. And then as soon as I did it, I was like, okay, well, let me try other flavors. What, what is crystallized honey? Good. So honey, honey wants to crystallize. Oh, honey. Like it, it, you know, honey in your cupboard kind of gets chunky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's crystallizing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So all honey wants to crystallize. So the only thing we do is we take regular wildflower honey, cotton honey, we take good honey, and then we put in a small amount of honey that has already crystallized. And those that honey acts as a seed or a starter. Our starter. Okay. And, exactly. and so we blend it really well, uh-huh. add our flavors to it, and then it crystallizes. It sets up semi-solid, like almost like butter. Okay. Yeah, butter. yeah. And um, what happens is since honey is so dry, the cinnamon will not dissolve. It's not a um, what's it called? It, oh, no. no, the moisture level. Yeah. Honey? Well, the- I put chocolate milk. Chocolate. It's chocolate milk. There's no separation between the milk and the chocolate particles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's in honey, it, there's total difference. There's yeah. honey particles and there's cinnamon. And the cinnamon is not dissolved in there. Okay. Because mm. honey Sorry. is okay. less than 18% moisture. And because the moisture level is so low, it can't, uh, it, doesn't real, it doesn't melt anything. Like it won't melt a dry ingredient. Uh-huh. So you could mix, mix cinnamon in with your honey, but... If you did too much, it's going to be gooey. Kind of it's going to come to the it's top. Going be, there's going to be gotcha, striations, gotcha. and you're going to taste dry ground honey and cin- and I'm sorry, gra- dry ground cinnamon, cinnamon and honey. honey. And so to encapsulate the cinnamon, you have to create a molecule, a honey molecule that goes around it, or that can, or it can okay, sit okay. within. And and it's a crystallized honey is not rocket science, but it is a pain because you can't get it too cold like a refrigerator. Mm-hmm. Or it, nothing will happen. And you can't have it too warm or it won't crystallize at all. Mm. And so there's a happy medium. And that's what we've been able to figure out. And this is kind of the, the recipe. It's the, we do the hard stuff. That's why we have so many flavors. Is it's easy to pour something like orange blossom honey or wildflower honey. And that's why there's so many people do. Yeah. It's not as easy to make cinnamon, cocoa, ghost pepper, lavender, pumpkin spice, you know, to get to these 20. And do it at a high quality. Because we don't, we don't skimp on quality at all. Um, and you know, our seeded honey has five different, six different seeds in it. And it is a, it's the most difficult product to make. That's why not many people make it, mm-hmm. but people love it. Yeah. So, so we do the hard yeah. stuff. Yeah, you, were, so, you were, you were talking. Yeah, sorry. So he, that's okay. No. So he came home and he's like, we need to try something new. So we tried that. And then I really like to cook. Okay. I really like to eat. <laughs> and so I was like well let's try other flavors so that's when we started to do our arbol pepper infused honey we did our vanilla infused and it just kind of it was just like for you guys like you were just like let's test it out let's test it out exactly let's try it and see if people like it and we liked it and so it just that's really what kind of started us awesome so so what what do we figure out as far as the competition i mean what did you you guys made some adjustments oh and then because like that you know that is a real thing yeah like when when you get in business Mm -hmm. you will have competition oh that's right a la (laughs) You know, the kid down the street that wants to cut your grass for five bucks cheaper, right. uh, Amazon, who's a big player, yes. whoever it is, you will, and you will have to, and I, I you know, I was, uh, I have a mentor that taught me try, fail, and adjust. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, you, you're yeah. going to have to make some shifts. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like IBM started out making, you know, uh, meat slicers, and then it was like, you know, time clocks, and then computer parts, and now I think they're like in consulting yeah. with a little bit of, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. um, so how, so like what what was the next step like like the, well, you once know, we started making things like the cinnamon or the, with the cinnamon and then the arbol chili pepper and the vanilla infused with the full vanilla bean and then the bourbon, was, bourbon for, infused for, for, what, pumpkin spice yeah, once, kind of once we got to like those first five then we were a thing that people want to come to the farmers market mm-hmm. and it was it was worth it to come and then I didn't really care if someone else was buying that from the farmer next door great gotcha, gotcha. i can play well with those you know, the farmer over there has this buy the fancy fun stuff from us 100 percent. and yeah. it started working yeah and because charlotte is such and north carolina is, is a foodie 
you know, and this is 10 mm -hmm. years ago, yeah, so yeah, yeah. foodie was really in. Yeah. And it really helped because we had a lot of chefs buy our stuff. And we nice. had a lot of people who wanted to try cooking with it. And it was the way we promoted it, and we still believe it 100% is purpose of our honey is primarily for people who don't like honey. Because if you don't like honey, you will like my cinnamon honey, I guarantee. You will not taste the honey in it. And so it's a way for people who don't like honey to cut back on white sugar to get you know some sweetness it's a way for parents yeah, yeah. to give their kids like our cocoa honey or no lemon it, so. yeah no dairies in it it's a way for parents to kind of move their kids away from white sugar and give them something healthy and that's sort of how we started and what we still believe i love that i uh, I'm, I'm reading a book right now called uh, blue ocean strategy and it talks about like in an, in an ocean where there's a lot of competition the water's not blue, it's red, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, you yeah. wanna find a, 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 an area of the ocean where it's blue, yeah. and it's like, that's what you guys found. Yeah. Like you you, yeah. you, didn't, you didn't care about like, you know, Sally McGee selling her, you know, honey to make an extra thousand bucks to go to the beach that year. Mm -hmm. You were like, you know what, let's create a, a niche product mm -hmm. within this segment. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. But I think the most important thing for your listeners who are thinking of starting a business is, do what you're good at. That's good. Um, because, you know, we're a lot of people want to get into it and they just kind of want to own it and they want to control all of it. And one of the first things, so we had we had a household moving company. And For 20 years. 20 years. How, how, how did you guys get into that? Well, I grew up, I, my grandfather started a moving company in 1940. Okay. And so I grew up doing that as a kid. And before job, I left for the army, job. you know, I worked there from the time I was 13 till. 18, no? Okay. And then um, went to the Army, came out, went to school full time, got my business degree, stayed at the bank. I was at the bank about 10 years. And I was okay. like, I'm going to die. I'm gonna, you know, I was a, a glorified paper pusher. I'm a blue collar kid that had a the college degree. And so I went and bought a truck. Uh -huh. And because I was worried about down. I was worried about downsizes. Well, that yeah, was... because he was, you were kind of in technology at that point, yeah. like a business sort person, is. and everything was being outsourced. And so he came home one day and he's like, you know, it's quite possible I'm going to lose my job at some point. So I went out and bought a $7,000 truck with 400,000 miles on it and started moving people. And before long, I was doing $10,000 moving jobs with a $7,000 truck, you know, week after week. And yeah. a year into it, I was making more from 4 o'clock at night until midnight doing the moving than I was in my regular job. Okay. And then I, I pushed it for four years. Nice. And it wore me out, but I did it for four years and, and then quit. got a good customer base going. And then... What did you learn from that? Like well, the, what like, I learned like, was when the like bank the, offered me six tenths of 1% raise because they were all having to do budget cuts. I'm like, we just spent more money talking about it in this one hour meeting than I'm going to earn. You know, I was making like 80 yeah. at the time. so. It's, Eight hundred dollars a year. I don't know what it was. Yeah. And so, um, that's what I learned was you go out and you know you got to make your own crowd. Yeah. So I keep I say all the time, and you do a, if you do a good product, just that much better than the competition mm. at either the same price or just that much less. Yeah. People will be the path to your door because mm. people will seek quality, mm -hmm. and you just cannot you cannot skimp on quality. It's a very right. good point. Period. Right. And that could be quality customer service. Yep. It's quality product. It's the way you answer the phone. It's the way you look when you show it's your employees. Up. It's yeah, yeah. Everything. Everything is a message. So, so you you got that experience, and then obviously, you know, I'm sure you infused that into you know cloister honey, and you know. Well, technically, so what happened was no. so so we we'd always been in management at the bank, you know, so we thought we knew what business was, uh -huh. but it's not until you actually try to run a business that you realize how much you don't know. Yeah. It's sort of like the first time you have a child. You think you know everything about life, you have a baby, you're like, I don't know what I'm doing. And that's kind of the way it was yeah, there's a, business. There's no handbook for this. There's yeah. no handbook. There really isn't. But that being said, we read a book. It was called. It, e we sell it to everyone. It's called the E Myth, the Entrepreneurial Myth. Uh huh. We hate it. <laughs> Randall hated every. I've heard of that. It's only got 120 pages. He hated is this, it is that because thick? it told him every everything they said to do or not to do is what he didn't do or did in the moving company. Yeah, so I did the moving company completely backwards. You know, so yes, like, completely backwards. And the moving company was okay. successful, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. but not. Greatly successful. Sure. It, it plugged along and we it plugged we along for 20 years, yeah. yes. Yeah. 
So then when it came to the honey company, we wanted to approach it a little different. Okay. And that's where we really learned, um, <clears throat> know what you're good at. And Randall and I are two completely different people. Okay. And it's what am I good at and what is he good at. Talk about that for a second. Well, he is more an extroverted than I am. I mean, he's not an extrovert like you are, but he's... He's no, talking to people, he so doesn't yeah. mind. You know, I'm the books person. I'm kind of the control person. I like quality. Sure. I kind of have my lane. I, sure. I'm really good in it. And he is a little bit more fluid. Yeah. And so he is really good at sales. He's really good at talking to people. So one of the, I think the number one thing we took from the E-Myth, and we did it right when we started, was they say, create an org chart for what you want your business to look like. And then you put your name in pencil in as many of those boxes as you need to. But to at some point, with. your name comes out of that box. Sure. And if you go into it with the mentality of, I'm not always going to be the baker of the pie. It's my grandmother's recipe. I love it. I love baking. And you can decide that you are there. But if you are in the, in the box that bakes the pies, you cannot be in the other boxes. Like mm. you maybe aren't in the finance box. But if you're like, I really like making the pie, but I just kind of like doing it as a hobby, then you hire someone to do it because that's where the business will grow. If you hold on to every aspect of it, the business is a good It won't grow because you're holding too tight. You're holding too tight and you're probably doing things you're not very good at. Yeah. So ultimately, sometimes it comes down to, you know, a conversation about pricing and it's how does it affect finance? How does it affect sales? And if it's, you know, and then sometimes I have to turn to them and say, you're a sales guy. You know what the budget is. You know yep. what we should be bringing in. Yep. If you want to, you know, make that deal, that's fine. You know, that's a, you know, like my, like a, my mind is racing with, you know, I there's a there's an analogy that I heard a long time ago. It's a, it's like a it's called the spider monkey mentality, where, you know, the way like in the jungles they would catch these spider monkeys is they would hollow out this gourd and put a little fruit in it, <laughs> yeah. and you know it would put his hand in it and grab the fruit, but because of the fist, it um, can't get it mm -hmm. out. Yeah. And you know when you try to do too much yeah. in a business, yeah. um, it will limit yourself. Mm -hmm. Another part of what you said that I, I love it's, um, you know, you you in the beginning you do have to wear multiple mm -hmm. roles, but yeah. in order to scale a business, yeah, you, you have to start delegating. You know what I mean? And yeah. you know that that doesn't mean you're not overseeing and making yeah, sure yeah, yeah. you know, but but you can't do everything. Yeah. That's right. You know and. You know, you do need to stay in, a, in your lane. I mean, I'll give you an example with our business. We got into um, seasonings and, and some food products because I was going into these restaurants and like the same jug of oil was, everywhere. was at every – and yeah. I'm like, I'm seeing seven jugs of oil at every restaurant. If I make 50 cents or a dollar on every jug – I could pay for the fuel of the truck that day with just this jug of oil Yeah. yeah. and then the paper's profit yeah. and you know – we we started we started getting into oil and sugar and salt and we saw a couple of those things but then, but then we got into seasonings and you know it just it just we didn't know what was sell I mean, we we couldn't push it we yeah. couldn't train as good yeah. and then we're like you know what we just need to do paper like yeah. we're we're like this is what we're good at like this is what we know we've you know we've done mm -hmm. it for you know years now and so um, yeah just knowing what you're good at yeah, and it's having you roles have to, yeah you have to know your lane whether your lane is it's a particular product or it's a particular service or it's your position yep. and yep. your strength within the organization you have to know the lane sometimes the lane can change and that's perfectly fine it's just a conscious decision to go in a different direction for our product and, and then also uh, that also depends on how big you want the company to mm -hmm. be yeah. I mean, yeah. If you want a little small business, okay, you can wear all the hats. You want a hobby? Budget. Or you want a business. Exactly. Right. And that's two different things. 100%. Yes. And you can do, you can make a good living at a hobby. And lots of people do. Sure. Yeah, there is absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's um, it's just kind of knowing what you want. What you want. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So, 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 we let, did, so, so we did the honey company, or the, we had the moving company from 2000 until 19. Okay. And we started the honey company in Really like nine, ten, because mm -hmm. six, seven, eight were just kind of growing. Officially like ten, yeah. yeah. And once we were able to start selling this, we decided to go to Atlanta, mm -hmm. and we went to the the Mart, the, the, the America's the Mart, America's Mart. Which is right? a... It's a when you hear people, primarily store owners, a lot of the ladies say, "We're going to market." Okay. When you're going to market, it's either Atlanta, Dallas, New York, Minneapolis. 
Vegas. Okay. Um, and in Atlanta, they've got there's five, four or five buildings, and there's twenty thousand vendors. Yeah. And what? Oh, and everything from baby clothes to. Is it like once a year or something? Uh, twice a year. Twice a year. Well, it's two clothes, huge, huge, to huge. luggages, to t-shirts, you, you to can walk in wear. to everything. market, and there will be someone selling 400 different styles of cover, phone, phone cover. There's someone selling 300 different patterns of the same cup, or you have to put on six different cups. And there's almost nothing, it changes your whole world, there's almost nothing you can look around and go, oh, that's nice. It's at market, and there are, you can order ten thousand of them. It's yeah. It's not. It just changes your. It warps your entire world. So it's where store owners go to buy product for their store. Mm -hmm. Okay. So whether it's aggressive. a gourmet food store or it's a yeah, I see this. The spider. spider. Yeah. A gourmet food store or it's a um, a, a nature store, a bird, a store that sells uh, bird uh -huh. houses. Uh -huh. um, uh, a, Table linens, just everything is there. There'll be a store that has 400 different versions of this, different fabric, different size box, different shape. Yeah. And people go and say, I want six of these for Easter, 12 of these for Mother's Day, 40 of these at Christmas time. Okay. With this color, this decoration, this flavor, this. And that's where we get a lot of our wholesale and customers. This, and so, go, and they're gourmet food stores. And those are expensive. And the, I mean, the shows are. Seven, eight thousand dollars to to go set up to go set up okay. just for the space a ten by ten just for, for the space four days. not your stuff in the space. So if you're walking and spending ten thousand dollars by the time you do hotel and food and sure. down there sure. and dra drayage moving in moving out for four days, mm -hmm. it that separates the hobbies from the business. Yeah. Now you can still have a hobby if you just keep dumping money into it and never make money. But after so we did it for we've done it now for twelve years mm -hmm. and. Probably the second year we started, the first year we started breaking even. Mm -hmm. We could break even the product. And then, but you need to be making multiples. You need to be selling 20, 30, 40 at a show. Yeah. And then those people go back home, they order, you ship, and then hopefully they reorder two more times during the year. Okay. So that's how the business starts to grow. Gotcha. And then um, and we were doing all this out of our house, at, out of one bedroom and a garage. Okay. And, and you were um, there for how long? Until fourteen. Yeah, until fourteen. 14. So, so five, five years. Four five years. years. Yeah. So we started, which, which is a good point to everybody. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Listen, oh, yeah. like keep it. I mean, I, I don't think to this day we have eighteen employees, mm -hmm. maybe like six in the office. I don't think to this day we've bought a desk. Yeah. 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 Like my dad mm -hmm. had four, right. four yeah. desks oh. from restaurants he opened and closed. Yes. We snagged those. Um. I think all of our chairs I found like on market, like you yeah, know, yeah. like basically marketplace for like you know, yeah. $12. you know, <laughs> five of them for like a hundred bucks, yeah, like yeah. you know, because some motels going out of business. I mean, like literally, yeah. so yeah. we we bootstrapped we too, you know what I mean? And so and so yeah, like it's cool to have an office in Uptown. It's mm -hmm. cool to have a state of the art warehouse, but like in the beginning, yeah, do right. what you can with what you can. That's How right. many jars do you have to sell at? That's what $6 you have to, look at to pay everything. for that rent. Yes, you have to look at everything as in, as in what do I need to sell in order to pay for that one thing, whether that's a chair, a nice desk, whatever it is. It all costs Absolutely. money. And I think a lot of people do get into it sort of with the, they like the projection of the image, mm -hmm. sure. the way they're going to be. Yeah. And you have to realize, <laughs> no, to be successful, you're not going to be yeah. that. They want the BMW there. and the Rolex. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, so year exactly. one. As a friend in the, in the warehouse, and we'll show you later, it's, you know, it's 6,000 square feet and it's full of stuff. And a friend of ours that rents another one of our warehouses from us came in not too long ago and looks around and he goes, not too long ago, all of this was cash. Yeah. And you're like, it just, you're like, yeah, it's got to move. We got to keep this stuff moving because it's, it's money. It's just dollar bills sitting there. Yeah. Everything is. Yeah. And I think that, you know, that still goes back mm -hmm. to know your lane. And yeah. if you're a person and, you know, you and I talked yesterday on the phone and I said, I consider this business owners, not necessarily entrepreneurs, although, because to me, and this is just my personal opinion, entrepreneur is this term that people use to, in some ways, kind of talk about creativity. 
Um, and, and sometimes it's people who like to start things, but sometimes when you're a business owner for many years, you're going to start and work it before you finish it. 100%. And you have to do that whole range. So go into it understanding it's hard work. You just can't say, I've got this idea. I'm going to sit here at a desk and customers are going to come to me because they think my idea is great. <laughs> we are in an environment with all social media and, you know, 18 year olds making billions of dollars. Sure. It's, it's an anomaly. It you is. You cannot I'm... hold yourself to that value or to that esteem. And whether you're 18 or 21 or 51, it, it's, it's the oddity that that ever occurs. And there's a lot of backing for that. Yeah. And I mean, you know, it, it just, my, you know, I, I always, I encourage everybody just start a business, t-shirt business. I mean, I was getting my car washed yesterday and the, and the, the two young guys came up to me and we were, we were just talking a little bit and, you know, hey, what do you do, this and that? You know, I was dressed nice and mm -hmm. they were like, yeah, I want to I wanna start a business. I'm like, do it, mm -hmm. do it. Like, do it, learn from it because you will learn something no matter how it goes. You, you will learn, learn you don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. True, true. You, may, you may learn you just want to work for something. You, you, you might do learn, a job. I don't like to work. Hunter, I mean, listen, the, the, the number seven guy at Facebook or gal at Facebook, they do well. Yeah. Most overnight success success stories have been at it for at least 10 years. Yeah. Isn't that so interesting? It's yeah. It's just, yeah. Because every level, like when you, we graduated yeah. from farmer's market to, and then we went to uh, after to meal. Right. And we're like, oh, this is great. Look at this. Well, then you have to. We, we don't have to bring a ta We don't yeah. have to bring a table and our tables set up. Like, this is great. We have a space. Yeah. We we paid for a space on two hundred dollars a month or something right. that we built. And, and then we went from after to meal to market. And we were in like a. And we're like. Five by ten. Yeah, ten yeah. You know, middle booth in the back. And we were like, this is great. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah, you're fired up at every level. But now yeah, but, you do that it, for three but years. But at every level, the competition that you're is. At least, at least where you are, and when you step right. in, you're the weakest one at that level. Eat or be eaten, and you got to learn pretty quick. Yeah. And so, it's it never gets easy. So if you don't like competition and disappointment, business is not working. That me. is true. And you know what? I like the fact that I I like to look up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because like you can yeah. become a big fish in a small pond when you yeah. always look down. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Right. So right. Like, I I always like looking up like. Okay, cool. Like we need to get to X amount of people on our YouTube channel. We need yeah. X yeah. amount of sales. Or we, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I was, like you haven't arrived yet. So it it right. it, it, it keeps the spirit of like right. uh, that drive going. You and, know what I mean? And you do well if you recognize that you never really arrive. That is it's true. It's you really, the it's yeah. It, it really, really is because you'll never be. If you're good, I mean, yes, you might get to the point where then somebody wants to buy you. Sure. And they come to you and they sure. say, I want to buy you. And you can say, okay, now I've arrived. But you're then going to say, now where do I go? Yeah. Okay, now, it's, it's, now what am Business I is very different than sport. Yeah. Sport, there's an end. That's yeah. right. Time will yeah. run out. Yeah. Business, yeah. you can, mm -hmm. as long as you want, play right. in the game. That's yeah. right. Yes. Right? Yeah. yeah, there's, so it, it helps um the aging process too because you can start young you can start at 70 you can yeah. you can start at any age and you can do this for as long as you 100 percent. colonel yeah. sanders with kfc started in his yeah. 60s or 70s i think yeah that's a great yeah. story yeah. and so um awesome all right yeah. um anything else anything else i mean well, let's let's fast forward a little bit you guys market you started getting your name out there uh -huh. you started getting wholesalers um you know any other pivots or any other mindset shifts you know as you guys progress over the last 10 11 14, years so yeah. uh, probably 14, yeah 15. yeah yeah so we were we, we got the business we're doing pretty decent we had about five employees at okay. the house and it was killing joanne because she was still at the bank she was still banking okay making, making good money really okay. good money yeah and so the, we didn't have the pressure on us because we had the honey company and the moving company okay. so we're we're doing okay and then it's so december and she was just the bank is just it's a very misogynistic world out here and she was senior management, but still, it never changed. If you're not the top dog, it's not great. And uh, she came in on a Wednesday night, and uh, or, and she was just upset. She go, I don't know how long I can keep doing this job. And I'm like, whatever you decide, it'll be okay. Thursday morning, 11 o'clock. You're, you're already full-time? Well, I, I had the honey comp. I, was, I had he the money, the, moving company. Yeah, was he was full-time. Southern yeah. moving. Yeah, okay. And we were kind of managing honey together, yeah. okay. but the moving was full-time. And uh, she comes in Thursday 
morning, 11 o'clock, I'm at home and this desk was at the house and I'm sitting at the desk and she walks in and I said, are we going to lunch? She had a box in her and she goes, I just quit. <laughs> it was the best feeling in the world. Oh my gosh. I love that. Yes. So what, so what was that I was like? thrilled. He was petrified. I, it was he, I horrible. mean, it caused... We fought for we like fought. six months because we talked about it a little bit. We had talked about it, and he just—he was like, "This is never going to be a business. I don't know how we could ever do said, this." Do you know how many thousands of jars? And then finally, jars? I just got to the point. Yeah, he's do you like, know how, how many? You were, you were thinking the numbers. Of yeah. jars <laughs> it'll take to replace your. Do you know how many tens of thousands of jars we have to sell every month yeah. or every year yeah. to make this work? Yeah, but I was like, "We will." I was like, "We will," and you know what? You give me six months. I've given you whatever you need for your southern moving and. You give me six months. Looking back it, now, in six months, if it does, if we're not going into our savings account, yeah, um, so that was a rule. We couldn't go into investments. We couldn't go into savings. Right. Like we had to right. bootstrap. And but figure I mean, it out. and I think that's something we tell everyone that wants to start a business is start it. Start it as a hobby. Yeah. Start it while you're making money off of somebody else. Yeah. Because it's what gives you, uh, it gives you a little bit of peace of mind. Sure. And I know you hate that day job and you're doing this and I know you're tired and I know you're working till 11 and 12 o'clock at night but you're learning so much and at the same time you're you know not having the crush of making money over your head you know yeah. how profitable am I mm -hmm. is going to give you this freedom to continue and when that time comes and they're butting up against each other yep. and you're feeling that friction yep. then you leave okay but you got to feel that friction if, it's right? a really good point friction creates fire Without it, you just... I thought we were going to be bankrupt and lose our cars. Oh, he had us living out of the car. The kids would never go to college. In, in your mind, oh, Mark. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh. The house is gone. Everything's gone. We're sleeping in the car. Kids are not, you know, they're penniless on a street corner. And I never felt that way. But now, he definitely did. Now, okay. So at the time, mm -hmm. at the time that you were thinking, at the time, you know, and, mm -hmm. and Joanne, you were, you know, maybe not as much, but looking back, because like that could be a very big decision for oh, yes. I mean it's a oh, big yes. decision. We so not be here. Have, looking, a, have an escape plan. Have looking plan. back, what did you learn from that? What advice could you give to somebody? Like, is there anything, you know, make sure you have savings. Like what 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 would you recommend for Mary, for, Mary Smart? <laughs> Mary up. Mary up. <laughs> so I would I recommend to anyone. Because yeah, hindsight's yeah. twenty twenty, so like that, that, now That's now right. we've played it out. That's right. You guys have an mm -hmm. awesome business. Yes, but at the time you didn't know. No. Yeah. Right. Correct. So what right. what you know, I believed. One hundred percent. But I didn't know. Correct. So I, like I said, you have it. You have to have a plan B in life. You always have to have a plan B. So if you're going to, so here, my recommendations. If you're going to dive into a business. Know what your out plan is. No, yeah. if it doesn't work, set yourself some sort of a goal. Yeah, it helps your partner in crime. Yeah, know that you're project that you're thinking out there and that you're not going to just flounder for a year. On a so no, here's what I'm going to do. If in ten months I'm not, we, money we both don't feel comfortable about this. I'm not making money. I'm whatever. We're going into our savings too much. I'll go back to what I do. Or that's number one. Number two is, and this is really hard. Be realistic about what you're offering. Yeah. Everybody oh we gosh. talk to. Everybody. Everybody's everybody. Start, everybody starting a small business, new business. Everybody loves my product. Everybody. everybody oh, yeah, no, so and so is going to buy it. I'm going to get in this store. I'm going to get in all of the Harris Teeters. I'm going to Whole Foods. Be realistic about your product. Yeah. You're not the only seasoning company out there. You're not the only honey company. You're not the only company. <laughs> when we got into Whole Foods, Foods, we were high five and we, we thought this is the deal. <laughs> This is life. We made it. it. We made it. Champagne. Yeah. Done. <laughs> right. Let me let me go pick out. Let me yeah. go pick out the pork. And then what, you know, and, right. And then what you find out is Whole Foods changes grocery managers every like three that. months. And mm. If you that grocery manager might like you, the next grocery manager that has never heard of you, and he's going to bring in the people like, that or, that he knows. Right. Yes. Right. Or, and so you disappear. You know what? You had this much of a shelf, and then they stopped ordering. You got that much of a shelf, and as you know, the next product goes on that shelf and you lose shelf space. So be realistic about, it's like great no, one. you know what? We're not all like, we're not all bringing iPods to the table, right? A lot of what most of us do is what other people have done. Sure. And so you can improve on what they've done, but it's not brand new. And if you are bringing something totally brand new, 
you have to understand the market is slow to adapt and you're mm. gonna get people like this is great and also go to a farmer's market talk to people because your friends and farm. family have told you what you wanted to hear yeah, they think you're brilliant they you, think this is wonderful or beautiful your people you couldn't think anything incredible, wrong right you need to work for somebody that doesn't like you and you need to sell to people that don't really want your that product, don't really want your product. You don't that have money you that they could spend on anything they want in this room what makes them vote with your money yeah, yeah. what but makes I'll them vote for that. you with your money with their money yeah. I'd say uh, mention this you, you you brought it up but relationships right mm -hmm. whether it's manager at a store mm -hmm. whether it's a wholesaler yeah. whether it's a restaurant the importance of relationships in business yeah go ahead you're the sales guy it's, it's non-stop maybe yeah. a lot of people a lot of people once they get your product they just you don't have to talk to them ever again and then so many on the initial sales you just got a handhold but you just don't you need to under promise and over deliver just a little bit and it sounds so many people just promise everything but just yeah. if you give somebody a product that's a little, just a little bit better than they think it is they're gonna be so impressed yep um, but and I mean, understand you know where your product is either the same as someone else or maybe not equal to and um, you know not necessarily in food products but maybe in services you know there may be somebody out there that is a little better at what you do understand why they're better yeah try and to try to learn from it and we randall has a, a saying it's um if you can't fix it feature it and so try to understand like why you're different and maybe i can't fix it because i don't have the same money they have but here's what i bring i bring customer service sure i bring every time you call i'm the person who's going to pick up the phone yeah. and that's what we can offer is we don't outsource a single product. Well, our honey straw, somebody does that part for us. Somebody puts the honey but otherwise, on. we touch every single jar. We put the labels on, we put the seals on the jar, we put the honey in the jar, we taste every bucket of honey we buy from a beekeeper, we taste it, we know what it tastes like. Mm -hmm. And so we're not huge, but what you've got is you really have somebody who knows their product inside and out. I love that. And so understand that value that you bring. And don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid if somebody else is a little different than you, maybe a little better, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. and as you grow in for the relationship side is you can be taken advantage of by distributors all the time. Mm -hmm. And my pretty much my role is screw distributors. I mean, they just, they're, they're not your friends at in any way, shape or form, for the most part. Yeah. We dealt with a couple and we dealt with a couple of national sales groups that are really good. But it took we didn't go with a single sales group for till last nine January. years, ten years. Till we, not last one. January. We sold every jar for ten years. Direct sales. Direct sales. Direct sales. Yeah, Just the whole, either wholesale or retail on the website. And and we finally <clears throat> not caved in, but we they they approached us. You know, you get approached all the time, especially when you're when you, you got a pretty it. good product and you don't know what you've got if your quality is good there's good people come and they'll hit you with fees and they're they're just going to feed you to death and at some point you grow up and you go like here's my product and here's what i'm willing to give you 15 percent, and that's it you sell i'll pay you 15 percent. if i sell those customers after you sell i'm keeping it yeah because you didn't make the sale you know so um you got to be proud of your product but yeah. you got to deliver a, a a strong product but the, and, and that all that hard work helps because then mm -hmm. you understand the sales process. Yeah. You understand every single pushback somebody has given you. You've figured out how to work through and it, you respond how to work to it. around it, how to change your product. Um, when you are only in it for a year, you really, I know everybody thinks they do, but you really don't know. You don't know the product. You don't, you don't know your product. The, the public will wow. push back. That's good. It's mm -hmm. a really good point. I, I know just my, you know, years of, of business and customers and all that it's just you know relationships and that that salesperson to the owner relationship it's everything yeah i mean it's it's like you then become a friend yeah, yeah. and then you're a salesperson number two right and it's like oh you know here's nick my buddy and, right. and let's talk soccer kids baseball vacation business and then oh by the way do you need anything for tomorrow yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah and the way we say stay with our sales groups, because we have a sales group that covers east of the Mississippi, some in Wisconsin, the middle of America, and then some in the uh, West Coast. Uh -huh. And we have a chat feature that everyone can use, retail or wholesale. Yep. And we tell the salespeople, if you get stuck and you're a customer, you can't answer a question, you hit the chat, it pops in her 
her computer and phone and my computer and phone. Nice. One of us will answer in 20 seconds. Nice. And they're like, what about this? Da, 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 da. And boom. It's they're a, or they can call us, but the chat works really well when nice. I have a sales pitch. With, yeah. Because those sales people are going out and they're selling 40 products. Yep. And they keep pulling things out of the bag and they pull pe- things out of the bag until people run out of money. You know, do you want to have me this or something yeah. like this? So you want to get out of that bag. And, and I think really what we're saying is the way we started, and everybody does it differently. It's just what we were comfortable sure. with. We grass-rooted grass this whole thing. This was all we started in Charlotte. It's a great city to start businesses in. They're yeah. super supportive community. Slowly, we didn't go straight to ads. We yeah. didn't say, we're looking for an investor. We want angel. And an angel investor is going to put money because we're going to grow because then we're going to sell. We never went into it with that idea right. that this is going to be fast. Yeah. We didn't know how slow it would be, yeah. but we never went in and right. said, yeah, in two years, we're going to, you know, have this much money and yeah. we're going to build this and sell. And a lot of people do, and it's difficult, very difficult to do. Yeah, that. you're putting a lot of stress mm-hmm. on yourself because yes. a lot of stuff is in your control. Some of it is not. Oh, right. Yeah. And totally. we can even talk a simple thing, glass. So for example, we have a product, we use glass. Uh, we sell one product, one product in plastic, well, in food service size. Glass comes from China. We don't make, we, the United States does not make glass. Yeah. So it comes from China, Taiwan. Yeah. Um, so when you have the economy that we had, when you've got politics involved that we can't control, yeah. all of a sudden tariffs are going on things from China. Yeah. 45% increase in glass. Yes, they, 45%. They glass Do you raise your pro- the price of your product now? Who wants to pay 45% more for this product? You absorb it. Yeah. So understand that those, that resources external to yourself will also impact. Yeah, this jar is about, about, about a quarter a jar. And we buy 50,000 of these jars a year. Yeah. Where's that, you know? It's, yeah. And, it, yeah. and everything, every, everything that came out of China. I mean, yeah. trust me, I mean, all, gloves. Oh, yeah, yes. what about that? You faced it with That's your right. gloves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, every glove is yeah. made overseas. Right. And so right. now you're talking about every vinyl, latex, mm-hmm. poly, nitrile glove is four or five X, mm-hmm. like what it was, and then you can't get a hold of them, and yeah. then they're only selling to medical facilities, and so. Right. And then yeah, it's we, sitting on a truck, uh, sitting on a cargo ship and now the truckers are on strike and they're not taking anything off of the yeah we're, we're still dealing with that oh, i mean yeah. the food business yeah, is yeah. you know it's been uh it's been i mean but you know what like it, it's that's part of the job yeah like yeah. you take the good with the not so good yeah. right you know so. and i think that's a slow progression of growth helps you prepare for things like that yeah um i think if you start right in and you're like I'm going to buy 50,000 jars right now because I can get them at 20 cents a jar um, without really having kind of that knowledge of what could impact it. I yeah. think that's where people start to fail. That stress point becomes, you know, bigger. That fissure becomes bigger and bigger. Yeah. And then that stress is on top of you. Not good. You hate it. And I hate then, this job. And then in 2018, she told me we're starting a hemp company. Yes. So you guys have that too? Mm-hmm. Yep. So what, what, what's, what's happening, happening here? What, oh, so we, I do, about we do a CBD infused honey. Okay. Mm-hmm. So how, yeah. how does that work? So do you know anything about CBD? Uh, very little. All right, so I CBD is non-psychoactive. It comes from the hemp plant, okay. which is a strain of cannabis. Okay. And it has properties to help, you know, it's been proven to help with anxiety. It helps with, um, uh, tremors help with neurology. Uh, no, neurology. N- n- uh, I can't even say neuropathy. It. Neuropathy and hands and stuff. Okay. Like so this is and, a line of yeah. toy strong. Totally separate company. Totally but separate company. Wholly owned by us. Yes. Um, and so it started because we have a product, honey, that I thought we could add something to it that yeah. could also help a different demographic sure. or a different line of people that need it sure and so that's sort of how we started so, so how so if people are interested in this you have a separate website is there yeah. a company great river yep. hemp company. Mm-hmm. Separate company but again great river hemp yeah mm-hmm. com yep yeah yep. love but it. i guess it's the same thing it's kind of what a spin-off of, yeah. spin yeah. but again once you've been traveling down the road a while then you know what you can take that little off ramp diversify a little yeah yeah because you know see what, what happens yeah right. and it's and right. it's very small but it's profitable because we don't there's not a lot of development has to go into this. 
and we're looking at new new offerings and if, if cannabis when cannabis comes to Char, uh, North Carolina we'll be ready yeah and I love that. we'll we'll branch off in that direction yeah so that's that. the same thing for you know the folks that are thinking of starting a business is keep you know stay aware of what's happening in the future yeah. so you'll see like accountants today accountants are learning about the cannabis industry because in North Carolina growing hemp because we have all this farmland so you're starting to see that they're looking for niches so it's the same thing it doesn't have to be this could be anything yeah I love it's just that. kind of think look read what's happening look at your competition kind of look at the future see what's what's possible I love that this was awesome good this Thank was you. awesome Randall Joanne I I am I, uh, first off, I know much more <laughs> yeah, about, bees. about bees and hives and, you know, the roles of the male and, you know, mm -hmm. the, the fun activities there and, you know, but uh, this is awesome. I love it. You guys have such an amazing business. Um, and you know what? It doesn't surprise me why you have a, such an amazing business because you guys understand. You have, you have the mindset. You know what you're doing. You know what path you want. Like, it's, um, I just love it. I love it. So. Cloister Honey, if you guys have not tried the product, buy it, go online. Um, you know, obviously we have the spin-off Great River Hemp coupon. Yeah. What's your, so put a coupon out there. What's something real quick you can give me? It's uh, Paper Trail. All right, oh, paper Trail 20. Okay. Yeah, paper Trail 20. Paper Trails, we'll do Paper Trails with an S, 20. Okay. Paper okay. Trails 20. So 20% 20 20 off. 20% off. Look at, look at that. Yeah. Listen, for all you loyal viewers that stayed till the end, we're hooking you up, That's okay? It. So, um, you know, put that, you know, on, on their website. On the, in the, when and you're the ordering, when you're ordering. A, a coupon code. Which is cloisterhoney.com. Yeah. Or Great River Hemp, either one. So, and, um, and, you know, go on there, follow these guys, what, uh, you know, what is an Instagram and. Yep, Instagram, Facebook, it's like cloisterhoney1, and Facebook, it's at cloisterhoney on Instagram Twitter. and Twitter. Perfect. Follow these guys. Um, Love it. Yeah. Love it. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for the time. Thank and uh, we'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you guys so much. The restaurants you love, the food you crave, and the people that make it all happen. We tell their stories on the Paper Trails podcast with Albemarle Paper Supply.